This video is rated T or Tickle Me Pink. Are you guys curious what quests you should be prioritizing in Escape from Tarkov? Well, in this video we're going to talk about what quests you shouldn't get hung up on. Things like a dead end task, so a task that is maybe a giant pain in the ass and then doesn't lead to any more quests behind it and really wastes a lot of your time. Then the polar opposite, quests that you spend that same amount of time on and it has a, a rich quest line behind it that's going to give you a lot of experience and meaningful rewards. In this first section, we're going to talk about all the quests I think you don't really need to prioritize. That could mean you don't need to do this quest whatsoever if you truly hate it, or it could mean you can pair it up with quests later on, but they're just not high priority tasks and they're not worth being hung up on by any means. After we cover that, then we're going to go ahead and reel it back and then give you guys some goals on some quest lines you should really follow for really high tier rewards. I'm not going to tell you guys, oh, you know, get the capital container at level 60. I'm just going to tell you guys, you know, pretty achievable goals for the average player that you can look forward to if you follow the right quest lines. So without further ado, let's cut this intro bullshit and get straight into the video. So on Prapper, we're going to talk about quests you do not want to do, as well as ones that just aren't high priority. So for example, this first quest, search mission, you're going to want to do it at some point, right? But it's just not a high priority task, and that's because it's a dead end task. So search mission, I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's where you go find the Usek convoy and the Usek camp. That's right, I say Usek. You can Usek these nuts. I'm not pronouncing it Usek. I think it's funny. But anyways, it leads to nothing, so you don't need to do it. So go ahead and wait till you have a woods quest to pair this up with to get the most bang for your buck, all right? Don't just run in there for no reason unless that experience is going to push you over to like, let's say, level 15 and get you the flea market. It's just not a big deal. You don't need to prioritize it. It's a dead-end task. Same thing with Shootout Picnic. It comes a few quests later. And that's just where you go ahead and kill 15 scavs on woods, but it's just once again a dead end task. So we'll go ahead and pair it up with another woods task later. After that, you have the quest the Grenadier. So don't worry too much about going to factory, bringing a ton of grenades, bringing impact grenades. Grenadier is just not a big deal. The test drive quest series is behind it. Almost none of them are cap or required. They don't have very good rewards whatsoever. They give a little bit of experience, but they can cost quite a bit of money if you tend to die with things like the M1A. So don't worry too much about, you know, speed running Grenadier, if you will. It'll come naturally, especially if you watch my grenade tutorial. If you haven't, I'll have that on top right. Maybe watch that after this video. There's crazy properties of grenades, like how much they bounce, the shrapnel they use. And when you can use all sorts of different techniques like air bursting grenades, but people can never have any opportunity to even avoid the grenade. Oh, do you know the grenades roll different directions based on the grenade as well? There's a bunch of crazy properties all in that video. I'll leave for you guys. The next quest line, it's really not very important, is the You've Got Mail quest line. So there's not insane rewards behind this, and this is Prapper's Streets quest line. Now, the reason why I bring this up is a lot of you guys struggle to play Streets. If that's the case, go check out my settings guide. You'll get way better FPS over there. But if you just simply can't play it or you don't want to learn Streets, I know that's a lot of you guys. This quest line really isn't that big of a deal. You're just going to be missing experience. The last quest we have to look out for in the Prapper series is Reconnaissance. This is where you need to go to the roof of all the Lighthouse Rogue buildings. The reward is just not that good. And there's a pretty good chance you get sniped while doing it. It is also a dead-end task. All right, after this, on Therapist, Operation Aquarius Part 1 and Part 2 are not super important early on. So originally, getting that key for the water room is no big deal. It really spawns all over the place. However, Part 2 is when you need to get into Dorm Room 114. And this key can be rather expensive early on. I mean, at the start of this wipe, a few days in, I think I spent around 2 million rubles on that key just to get in there. There is a safe in there, there is a computer in there, but it's really hard to go ahead and swallow that bill, pay that money and continue to advance your quest. And this is just a dead end quest series. It feels really important to do, but it doesn't lead to anything, so don't stress over it. That being said, it's a little bit of a hidden tip. There's actually a hard spawn for this key. If you go over to the checkpoint on customs, there's a blue hatchback, the hatch open. If you loot the jacket, there's a high chance the dorm room 114 key spawns in there. You'll find it significantly more often than just like standard jackets, standard filing cabinets. It doesn't spawn always, but it does have an affinity to spawn there. And you can make a lot of money early on just walking by there, maybe just spawning the customs and going there because no one knows about this and no one loots it. The next quest from therapist you want to avoid is disease history. So this is the quest where you go to reserve and you go get all the medical records. So these keys, the closer you are to the start of the wipe, they can cost quite a bit of money and you're not really going to find any meaningful loot inside of them. This is like a good one if you have like a group to play with. Let's say one person buys them. Maybe you buy some keys next time. Joey afterwards buy some keys later. It's not that big of a deal. You can wait for the prices to go down. Sometimes with quests like this, when I'm playing solo, I'll just wait till they're naturally, you know, opened up. Maybe I'll run reserve two or three times, knock out other tasks and wait for those doors to be open. 
So there's just not a whole lot behind this task anyway. So if you want to save yourself the money early on, by all means, go ahead and do that. The quest you unlock afterwards is Seaside Vacation and it just doesn't give very much experience. It's a lighthouse task. We all hate L word. And not only is it an L word task, but it's a dead end L word task. So there's really nothing behind this whatsoever. The quest, your car needs a repair from therapist. Or you need to get all the car batteries and spark plugs. Those car batteries can be a pain in the ass to go ahead and lug out early on in raid. They're super heavy and they actually sell for a lot early on. You can get as much as like 300, 400K early on in a wipe for one of those things. And it feels much better to sell it than keep it. There's nothing behind this task whatsoever. It's just going to give you a little bit of experience. And if you're later on in the wipe and those carbides aren't even worth anything, I would just opt till later on when you have a high level workbench and you can buy a tank battery and then go ahead and craft your car batteries off of it. It'll save you time and money. However, if you're trying to rush it as soon as possible, those tank batteries do cost quite a bit early on, just so you know. After that, you're going to have lost contact and drug trafficking. They're both lighthouse tasks and they're, they're dead end. There's nothing behind them. It's just not worth going into Lighthouse and dying over and over and over for just two quests. You're going to get much more experience only just playing a map you enjoy and surviving. After that, we have Therapist Streets quest. So once again, if you can't run streets, you're not getting the most in this. It's mostly just free experience if you're comfortable with streets already. And that stems from the population census tree. But by all means, if you can run streets and you're comfortable with it, then of course, go ahead and get this. It's just free experience you're leaving on the table otherwise. And if you need like a Sherpa or someone to teach you streets, I'd be happy to help you out. Just join my Discord down below. And if I personally don't get the game with you, there is a plethora of cool guys, high levels, low levels. Everyone just comes together having a good time. I always hang out in there and I'd personally love to get to know you guys. I'll see you guys in there. All right, moving over to Skier. So the first quest you don't need to worry about is Stir Up. So this is the one where you need to get three pistol kills. Just don't trip over it. It's a dead end task. You don't even need to do it really ever. It doesn't reward a ton of experience. The only reason you'd really ever do it is for Kappa. You can come back later on, you know, dressed up as the Juggernaut with a Glock 18, just mowing people down if you want to. But it's just not a high priority task. Don't sit there and die and die and die. I see people prioritize this really early on, going in with a pistol, no armor. Usually they're over that level five, so they're no longer getting healed for free. And they just spend a lot of money on meds, dying, 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 knocking this out. Sometimes you go and get all three headshots. Other times you're the one that gets headshotted. It's just not a big deal. Don't stress over this quest whatsoever. It is also a dead end task. That I, I should mention that. After that, we have setup. So setup, I'm sure. Let me remind you guys. That's the one where you need to wear a scav vest, the fluffy ears. You can't even wear a helmet and you have to run a shotgun and shotguns suck this wipe. Maybe in the future, shotguns are going to be dialed in a little bit more but this wipe they are in the worst state i have ever seen them in in all my years of playing escape from tarkov setup is just not super important the only meaningful reward behind setup and it's not even unlocked from setup is actually from bullshit which comes later on down this tree and that unlocks you the mutant but the mutant also swipe is one of the worst weapons at a high level so i would not stress over that whatsoever there are like three to four medium level tasks behind setup however i know most of you guys are like level 40 and still haven't done this and i see you guys just grinding away and smashing your head against the wall if you're just not having a good time with setup you're not comfortable with shotguns and by all means, I would just say don't do this quest series. You are going to miss maybe like three or four, like 20 to 30,000 experience quests. But the only unlock you're really losing is that mutant unlock. And personally, I don't even run the mutant at all. This wipe, it is hot garbage. The next quest is a long road. So long road is the one where you have to go ahead and kill scavs specifically on the road. You usually can only get like two or three a raid if you're lucky. And I see people grinding away at this, just like losing their sanity trying to do this. It's just not important. It leads to a quest called missing cargo. And yeah, it's really not a big deal whatsoever. Just casually do it. If you decide to do your lighthouse quest, by all means, you can kind of like pop them as you're going, but don't load into Lighthouse just to sit there over the road and hope to get them. You're going to have an awful time. You're going to get sniped by some fucking Marine hiding up in the mountains. It's not going to be a good time for you guys. After that, you have the Lenly series. So Lenly series can kind of be a pain in the ass if you don't have the keys for it already. Luckily, there are shoreline tasks later on with these keyboard with the double up and you do need a lot of the same keys. So maybe eventually you'll have them or a friend will have them. I'll just knock it out at that point when you can. But it, they just lead the peacekeeping mission and most of you guys will not do peacekeeping mission. It's mostly just a cap request or a light keep request. It's a quest that forces you to run around in uh, untar armor, untar helmet and uh, M4 killing scavs on every map and yeah most people when they get to that point usually they're in their mid 40s when they have that quest they they don't want to run untar armor with you know an expensive modded m4 for example so i wouldn't stress it over it too much 
if you can get it done you can get it done but it's not like high priority by any means after that counteraction which is an usek only quest it's a quest you have to kill 20 bears all over the lighthouse region and there's another one of these quests but it's actually for prapper it's where you kill 20 Useks all over the Lyos region. It's just not a high priority task whatsoever, so don't stress over it. Behind that, we'll have samples. Now, samples is realistically, you only need to do this if you're going to go for Kappa. It's just not a big deal. Generally, to complete this task, you need to invest a lot of money on Intel folders. So they have the highest chance of returning those stimulants to you in the hideout. Which you've invested a lot of money in your hideout at that point. Or you need to buy the black key card or go to labs with someone with the black key card to find all these stimulants. And there's really not great unlocks behind the sample stats, so don't stress over it too much. The last quest Peacekeeper has that I don't think you should really prioritize is the guide. So the guide is where you need to survive every single map in a row without dying. This is once again, just really like a, a Kappa only quest. Don't stress over it too much. You know, don't go smash your head against the wall. If it's a fun challenge for you, you can attempt it. But if you're not going for Kappa, you can also just say, screw you to this quest. If this video is helping you whatsoever, please, please, please smash that dislike button and tell me to kill myself in the comments down below. Let's get back into the video. So the next one we don't want to worry too much about is Ragman's Streets questline. Like, just like the previous Streets questlines, you can't run this. Don't worry about it. If you're not comfortable with it, don't worry about it. But that is Audit, Ballet Lover, Dandies, and Audiophile. They don't have crazy rewards behind them by any means. The only thing you really get is the Osprey Rig, but this is the bad Osprey Rig that only has level 2 air mid behind it. And you really want to be running level 3 air mid for that extra damage reduction. I'll be doing a full armor tier list video here soon, so watch out for that. The next big one is inventory check. So inventory check is also somewhat of a dead end task, and it costs a lot of money. I mean, we're like two months into the wipe here, and it still costs over a mil in those keys. Most of you don't want to play reserve either. It's not like you're really going to get your money's worth out of those keys long term due to the fact that this map simply just has bad extractions. It's really not like viable extraction wise until you get that Red Rebel and Paracord. If you go down to D2, you're just going to end up in a stink rat TikTok. So by all accounts, I don't think you're going to get your money's worth out of these keys. And it's just not a high priority task. After that, Blood of War Part 2. Now this is where you actually need to get your fuel conditioners. It does have some meaningful tasks behind it. But I see people get like very frustrated by these fuel conditioners. You know, they get this task and maybe they only have one fuel conditioner. They have zero fuel conditioners and they just cannot find them. And they just start painstakingly grinding away for these. So don't worry about these. There are some meaningful quests behind this. And you do want to get this done at some point. But don't sit there smashing your head against the wall. Just make sure to loot those technical supply crates. For example, the ones you see in the customs fort. The brown crates. If you look up in the top right. It says technical supply that will actually spawn your fuel conditioners quite a lot and there's a ton of these either in the reserve locked cages underground or on customs on that skeleton side of the map and just go ahead and open those up whenever you're on customs next questing up next so mechanic i see a lot of you guys freaking out over the quest the door don't worry about it guys the rewards are not that crazy it's a dead end task do not freak out. I've been hearing people there saying they've checked the key spawn 100 times, 200 times, 300 times. Do not worry about it. We have some guys in my Discord who have been running people through this quest anyways because, you know, if you go and do it with a squad, you actually get another key as a reward. So everyone in the squad gets it. So if you really need help with this quest, you can't find the key, just go ahead and join my Discord. It's no big deal. But otherwise, do not stress over this. The next quest I'm going to strongly recommend you guys do not do, unless you're looking for maybe a fun challenge, you get bored, and that is Shooter Born in Heaven. I see a lot of you guys having no fun and complaining about this quest so much. Really, the only thing you're going to get behind this quest is the G28. It's slightly better than the RSS. If you've seen my best in slot like meta weapons video, if not, I'll be in the top right. Watch it after this video. It is slightly better than the RSS, but at the end of the day, it's just not worth doing this task for. If you love to snipe and this would be a fun challenge, by all means, go ahead and knock it out. But for most of you guys, you're not going to want to do this. The last task you don't really want to prioritize with mechanic is bad habit. That's when you need to collect all the cigarettes. This is just like the equivalent of your car needs a repair. It's a dead end task. You know, go ahead and grab these when you can. You have nothing else in your backpack. But if it's between carrying out some cigarettes to continue to support a chain smoker, I would say go ahead and get like high quality armor, loot, weapons, etc. out way before you get these smokes out. And for Jaeger, for the last trader on quests you should not do. So Jaeger has all sorts of annoying quests. He's considered by all accounts to be like the annoying quest giver in the game. And so the Tarkov shooter quest line, I see a lot of you guys absolutely hate this quest line. You have no fun. And I see people literally spending hours on just like one of these quests and they can give a lot of experience. However, if this quest line is giving you a hard time, this is the one where you're gonna be running around with a Mosin, with the iron sights, etc. 
by all accounts you do not need to do this it can be a nice little boost of experience but if you're already you know quite a bit above this task like when you actually got it the experience is not going to mean that much to you and you're really just not going to have a great time so it's really up to you if you want to like rush experience early on by all accounts this can be a great way to get a lot of experience early on otherwise do not stress the next one is shady business so shady business is the quest where you need to actually go ahead and hand in all the flash drives to jaeger right after you got done handing out all the flash drives to skier and this just doesn't have a lot behind it just don't freak out over it don't go sit there farming flash drives non-stop you'll naturally come across those flash drives as you're opening safes and filing cabinets throughout the world it just doesn't need to be a high priority task you're going to get it done at some point but don't you know bang your head against the wall trying to get this done this quest also leads to quest ambulance where you're going to want to hand over things like defibrillators etc you can save those for a lot of money and the rewards just aren't that good. Next quest you want to avoid is cold blooded. It's actually a dead end task. And uh, this is the quest where you need to eliminate two PMCs with headshots while suffering from a tremor effect. And I see people like trying to go into factory with like a broken arm, trying to give themselves tremors through the use of stimulants, etc. Just trying to finish this quest. And it's just not worth smashing your head against the wall. You'll naturally get this when someone gets the drop on you, you turn on them and you get a, like a lucky headshot. And it just, it'll just come over time in the wipe. Do not stress over this one whatsoever. Another quest you don't want to stress over is the Hermit. So the Hermit is a quest where you go into Lighthouse. You just find like this little uh, note in like the swamp section and you return it. But it's a dead end task. And I don't know about you guys, but I hate L word. And the last quest I just don't think is super important is the delicious sausage. So that's actually where you need to go to streets. Go ahead and find all the different grocery stores and then hand over a sausage. Um, it leads into some pretty annoying quests, so that it leads into reserve quests, well, funny enough, I don't know why that is, and the really annoying quest leads into is pest control. So pest control is where you need to kill scavs in the black pond building around the helicopter, and scavs just, they don't spawn there is the big issue. So player scavs can come in, you can go sit there and kill them. If you want to do this quest as fast as possible, what I would recommend you do just kind of like loot up in the area, maybe loot the school, you know, fight down low, and then go up in black pond and shoot something like an unsuppressed weapon and scavs will now investigate and then like come in you can get like two or three of raid doing it that way just be very careful there is a lot of people that just like to hide in the shadows in this building it is like like the number one spot where you're gonna run to someone like stank rat outside of d2 so just be very cautious in this building and by all accounts these quests just suck and they're not really worth doing the only caveat is if you're gonna get further into the wipe you will unlock the quest to go ahead and hunt gluhar from jaeger from this and that awards a weapons case which you can actually turn around and sell for like six to eight million rubles early wipe which is just crazy but you have to do that pain in the ass quest so you need to make that decision you might say wow that's a really good reward but we're gonna use that as a segue for the next chapter of this video and that is what quest should you do for great rewards in the game and so for that one it is up to you do you want to go through the pain of doing that getting ratted from dark corners in the black bomb building if you do if that weapon case is alluring enough then by all means go ahead and target that but otherwise do not waste your time on that quest line and before we go any further it may seem like uh, i've given you guys like a lot of options on quests to not do i don't anticipate all of you guys just write these quests off and for some of you it might not be a pain in the ass like you might really enjoy playing reserve and that last quest line is no big deal for you but I'm just giving you guys options is if you're sitting there and not enjoying these quests, you're going to get more experience overall and more progression overall by going ahead and let's say you like to play woods lock, going on woods and having successful evacs, collecting weapons, collecting armor and having a good time playing Tarkov versus going ahead and doing quests that just make you not want to play and you're not going to make any reasonable progress doing. So that is the ethos behind this. And up next, we're going to be talking about quests I really think that are worth your time, like long term goals you should look to achieve because they either give you an amazing reward or a really valuable unlock like things like meta attachments meta weapons really valuable things like rewards that give you six to eight million rubles for example and before we go any further i'm just gonna go ahead and have this sheet up on screen right now so if you want this sheet it shows all of the quests that are in the game and what quests lead into other quests you can actually get this sheet if you go navigate over to my twitch pop up in the chat you can do this even if i'm offline and type exclamation point quest list and that'll pop up as a helpful resource for you guys let's hop into the quest i think you should do starting with prapper so starting with prapper the first quest thing you should do specifically early on in a wipe so maybe it doesn't apply to right now but the next wipe is doing bad rep evidence as soon as you can and the reason is this unlocks the dovetail pso and if you get this on day one day two day three you're gonna find yourself in a position 
where you outrange all of your opponents. Early on, it's one of the best advantages that you can have is the suppressor and the advantage of a range. If your enemies can't hit you, you are going to have a beautiful time early on in the wipe. The biggest issue you're going to struggle with early on in the wipe is how long it's going to take to heal up to full with the weak medication you have early on. So maybe not super relevant to the middle of this wipe right now, but keep that advice in handy for next wipe. The next quest is Punisher Part 5. This is going to give you a lot of early money because you get a Dox Case reward for it. What I would recommend you do is actually sell this Dox Case early on into the wipe when it's still worth like around a million rubles or so. Because later on in the wipe they go down to around 300k or so. If you're doing this later on, you might choose to just keep this instead. Although you probably have already purchased a Dox Case by the time you get there. So it's really up to you. Right after is Punisher Part 6. So obviously, if you're a standard edition account, you're going to want the Epsilon container. It's going to be your biggest container until you choose to get a cap container, if you choose to do so. For many of you, it's going to be your biggest container for the entire wipe. You'll also have the opportunity, if you're not a standard edition player, to hand this over to Fence at, I believe, level 42. And that will allow you to get a massive rep boost to your scav. So if you like scaving at all, Getting that rep boost is going to enable you to play your scav so much more, spawn with better equipment, and overall just make more money on your scav in less time. The next quest is Perfect Mediator. This is a quest to get all max traders. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. Maybe you haven't heard of it, but once you get all max traders, you're going to be rewarded with a thick weapons case. The thick weapons case is particularly nice because you can actually slot weapons that are six long in there versus a normal weapons case that are only five long. You can get way more weapons in there. The last quest I recommend you guys try and aim for with Prapper is Capturing Outpost. So this quest you actually unlock, it's late in the game, so you're level 42 when you unlock Capturing Outpost. And it's a bit of a late game goal if you like 9x39 ammo. So VSS, AS Val, Capturing Outpost actually unlocks SP6 ammunition, which is insane. I wouldn't recommend using 9x39 weapons without at least SP6 ammunition in it. It goes through everything basically. It's going to mince tier 5 plates. Anything and get its hands on other than tier 6, and tier 6 will be defeated in a few shots. Combined by that insane round per minutes from something like the VSS to AS Val, SP6 is going to be your baby. And it's also very cheap to buy. You just need to complete capturing outposts. So if you're looking for something to do, this quest is not too bad if you're actually targeting it. And you will also just naturally complete it over time if you're playing woods, shoreline, or customs. That'll unlock a whole new playstyle for you to have fun with those weapons if you need something to do late game. When it comes to therapists, there's not quite as much. I recommend you guys do private clinic, and I'm sure, just like the thick weapons case, you've heard of this quest. This is the quest return turn a lead X and two ophthalmology scopes, and you get a thick case. You can get this right away at level 35, and I recommend you have all the quests completed as well as the lead X and two ophthalmology scopes are ready to go to turn as soon as you become level 35. This will make your stash look so beautifully. On a side note, I just recommend putting things like all your money cases, all your ammo cases, grenade cases, all the things you're really trying to store away in that one thick case and it'll clean up your entire stash so much. After that, we have healthcare privacy part five. This is just going to give you a meds case reward. It's really nice. I personally use between three to four meds cases just to store all my golden stars, my ibuprofens, my sellables, and my actual meds, etc., etc. After that, the last quest we have for therapists is colleagues part three. So this is the one where you need to turn in 10 labs key cards. And I only recommend doing this quest if you like to scab. If you find yourself scabbing maybe three, four times a day, save those cards that you spawn with those labs cards. Don't sell them. You'll probably get 10 by the time you have colleagues part three and you can turn those in for a black key card. As a bonus tip, I would suggest you don't turn everything in until you also have like the AHF1 stim, for example, just in the event that you accidentally kill Santar and lose all of those key cards. The worst case scenario, if you go broke, you can sell one key card, sell two key cards as you need. But this black labs key card sells for a lot, especially early wipe. It's like an easy 10 mil. So if you were to sell those labs cards, you probably would have only gotten like 1 to 1.5 mil. You're basically getting 10x value out of those labs cards by just saving them. When it comes to skier, we're going to talk about who to turn chemical part 4 into. So it wasn't improper in therapist because you can turn it into all of them. And it really depends on the situation. So first and foremost, do you have EOD or do you have standard edition? If you have standard edition, you actually spawn with like when you start the wipe, you start with the less trader up with every single trader. And what does that mean? Well, when you turn this quest in, two traders are going to get mad at you and one trader is going to reward you. And if you have EOD, you may not have to do the quest to go ahead 
and catch up with them. And so two trails give you quests to go ahead and earn rep back with them. So if you're EOD and you like questing, you may not even need to worry about the punishments whatsoever. And if that is the case, then by all means, you can just look at the rewards. So the rewards would be from Skier, you get a grenades case, which is the worst reward. From Therapist, you're going to get 200k. In an injector's case, early on, this can be worth like 1 million rubles. You have to look at the market at the time that you're actually going to turn this in for it to be super valuable to you. And then from Prapper, you'll get two ammo cases and 200k. Now, usually early on in Wipe, those ammo cases sell for a lot, somewhere usually around 700 to 800,000 rubles. And this can be the best reward in terms of a sheer money reward. Now, if you're not EOD and you don't want to do any more quests than you have to, the punishment for turning it in to anyone besides Skier is his makeup quest is you're going to have to give him a million rubles. When it comes to the therapist, she just wants a few keys. Normally, they'll cost you around 200,000 rubles in total. And Prapper wants 10 MC7 grenades. Depending on where you're at, these MC7 grenades could cost you anywhere from like 500,000 rubles to around 150,000 rubles. It really just depends on the time and the wipe. They are pretty easy to find, however. So now you have all this information, who you turn into. Well, if you're a standard edition account, you don't have EOD, I would just say skier. So you don't have to pay a million rubles. And that way, if you don't want to do a ton of quests, you're not in a bad spot. However, if you're fine with doing quests and the money is more valuable to you, then go ahead and just see what's more valuable at the time of recording the injectors case and the money or the two ammo cases and the money. And that's who you're going to want to turn chemical part four into. Sorry if that was a little confusing, but there are a lot of variables there and I want to make sure I covered all my bases so you guys make the absolute correct decision. Other than that, with Skier, there's not a whole lot of quests to target, in my opinion. When it comes to Peacekeeper, he only has a few quests that I really think you should target. The first one being Wet Job Part 4. So this is going to unlock the 308 Black MDR. I'll actually have my meta weapon videos up in the top right right now. There you'll see the 308 mdr in use go ahead and watch that after this video it is just a staple of this wipe it's kind of like the jack of all trades 308 weapon and 308 is king this wipe after that you're going to go ahead and complete wet job part 5 which is going to give you the r sass unlock which is also featured in that video that's going to be your best long range weapon for this wipe so make sure you try and get that far into the peacekeeper series if you want to have like super super strong meta weapons late game in this wipe talk about peacekeeping mission now peacekeeping mission i mentioned briefly earlier is a quest where you need to wear untar armor and an m4 and go around killing scavs on all sorts of maps so at the time of recording this the osprey protection kit that has the level three air mid underneath it that gives that extra you know damage absorption properties that is supposed to be locked behind peacekeeping mission however it is bugged and everyone has access to it at peacekeeper level four as soon as this is patched I would strongly recommend you do peacekeeping mission because that's one of the best armors in the game and i'll soon be releasing a full armor to us as there are other alternatives to this but it is just a great bang for your buck value it really gives you a lot of protection last quest thing you need to look out for with peacekeeper is your car needs a service now this is a very expensive key and it only has one use so i'd really recommend that you guys just go ahead and get a full squad maybe ask around in my discord for example and see if anyone wants this and the reason you're going to want to do this quest is it unlocks the M855A1556 craft. And the craft is super cheap. And you'll be able to just basically print black tip 556 ammunition in your hideout as much as you want. And it's going to be super cheap to you. So if you like using 556, I'd recommend that you try and complete this quest at some time. So with mechanic, with mechanic, you're going to want to do a lot of quests specifically in the gunsmith tree. So let me just rattle them off really quick. Gunsmith part five, try and get this done as early as you can as that's gonna let you buy ammo cases at level one from the barter. And I actually did a full gunsmith video. Now this isn't your typical bullshit YouTube, like five minute one gunsmith build. I did every single gunsmith build in one video as fast as possible, showing you guys the complete builds. Hopefully that's useful to you guys. I'll have that in the top right and that should be completely up to date with the white. So hopefully that's useful for you guys if you still have any gunsmith quests to complete. After part five, I'll strongly suggest you do part 10. And the reason for that is once again, the ammo cases, you'll actually be able to just buy them from mechanic level two. So do this as fast as you can, really. 
do not slack on your gunsmith quest. I know you probably haven't seen the gunsmith video yet, but if you're stuck on any gunsmith parts, I can buy them for you. I do not mind if you need, let's say like a PKP from Kaban, I will try to help you as much as I can. Just let me know. When it comes to gunsmith part 13, you're going to actually get the cock QDC suppressor and it's like the meta 308 suppressor. You're really going to want to have this because 308 is king right now. With gunsmith part 21, you're going to get the advanced receiver buffer tube. This is just the best buffer tube, stat for stat, bang through buck. You're going to put this on 95% of your weapon builds. When it comes to Gunsmith Part 24, it's going to go ahead and unlock the SE5 meta grip. And this is once again just the best grip in most cases. It just gives you the most stats. After that, the final Gunsmith is Gunsmith Part 25. And the reason you really want to complete this is it's going to give you five Bitcoins in a weapons case. This quest basically makes you around 10 million rubles. I'll be happy to go ahead and help you get that PKP. I do not mind whatsoever, but try and target this. It'll make you a lot of money and then also let you buy those meta weapon attachments so you can have super strong weapons in the late game. With his other quests, I want to make sure you guys complete farming part four. And this is the quest where you turn over three GPUs. So at the time of recording, this GPUs are going for around 900,000 rubles, right? But Bitcoins are also going for 700,000 rubles at the time of recording. And just like how in real life, graphics cards and cryptocurrency are kind of tied together, it's that way in game as well. And it'll always be worthwhile to turn these GPUs in even in the future, no matter what the price of GPUs are or what the price of Bitcoins are. And the reason for that after you complete farming part four you're going to get two bitcoins then you're going to get two extremely simple tasks they're going to award you four bitcoins so you're going to get six bitcoins sure you're going to lose those three gpus but you're going to profit a lot and then also gain experience so it's a no-brainer i see a lot of people freaking out about turning over those graphics cards just turn those three in complete the tasks after and you're going to make money and gain experience so make sure you're doing that that covers it for mechanic but when it comes to ragman these are the quests you're going to want to target. Sorry about that. That was my little bird. He likes to talk. You'll probably see him on stream. He likes to hang out on my monitor and stuff as well. But you're going to want to complete your database part one as soon as you possibly can in this wipe and, and in future wipes. Why is that? Because you can actually go ahead and buy Thor armor. There's a Thor barter on Ragman level two. That means you can get this as low as level 20. Now, Thor armor comes with level three Aramid in it. You're able to buy this at level two Ragman. Most armor that has level three Aramid in it, it can only be bought on the flea market or it has to be gotten at level four traders. This is gonna give you a lot of damage absorption. And this armor also comes with level four plates inside of it. On top of that, it only goes for two diaries. It's super cheap to get. You should basically be buying this on every single reset and it's just locked behind database part one. So go ahead and get Ragman level two as soon as you can and knock out all of those interchange quests fast so you get a nice armor boost. And if you guys wanna know more about like some of these hidden barters that no one really utilizes, just let me know in the comments down below. I know of all sorts of bars that can give you insane ammunition for cheap, insane weapons for cheap, or even for free, and things that'll just make you a lot of money in the long term, but I'm not sure if you guys really want to see a video like that, so let me know. The next quest I'm going to strongly recommend you guys do at some point is Living High is Not a Crime Part 2, and the reason for that is it's going to unlock the craft to make the Arma CPC Mod 1. So this used to be a really good level 5 armored chest rig, it is no longer good. Why do you want to unlock them? Well, it's one of the only ways to get the best light plates in the game. These are level five light plates that weigh under a kilogram. You can go ahead and run them in your front slot, back slot. I choose to run them in my back slot. Whatever you need to keep yourself underweight so you're training both endurance and strength in the same rate and you end up with max skills significantly faster while having the same protection. Every time you make one of these, you need to utilize one of the plates. So you're basically just sitting there printing the plates for free. And then you sell the rig and the side plates that come along with it and you just do it non-stop you have three level five plates that weigh nothing after that the last quest i want you guys to try and complete for ragman and this is a big one is long line and you'd be relatively high level to complete this quest but it's no big deal to complete whatsoever this will let you get the barter for the tasmanian tiger it is super cheap it costs 150,000 rubles and you're gonna go ahead and get two level six plates out of it now you could just sell the Tasmanian Tiger back for around 100,000 rubles, which means you're paying 25,000 rubles for level six plates. I like to pay this for the last tip, put a level six plate in the front, a level five plate in the back. They're both Western, so in that, if that level six plate gets defeated, you can swap them out, but you are in good, good shape with this. And that covers all the quests I think you should target for Ragman.
the last guy we have to talk about is Jaeger, and he's a little bit of a weird one. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a blanket statement here that all of the boss tasks are worth targeting. They're fun to complete, they're relatively easy to an extent. It can be frustrating sometimes to find the boss and sometimes the boss whoops your ass, but they generally have really good rewards. The two in particular I want you guys to look for is Killing Gluhar. We talked about him earlier. He gives you that weapons case that goes for around six to eight million rubles. I'd strongly suggest you just sell that weapons case and then buy, you know, maybe three or four weapons cases with the money. Matter of fact, you could probably get more like six to eight weapons cases, then do the barter and turn those into like or thick weapon cases if you chose to. That might be a few too many, but it's way better to sell it and then reinvest the money back in. After that, killing the goons is going to reward you a sick case, which once again goes for around five to six million rubles. Make sure you try and knock these out. You know, they're fun quests and they're going to make you a lot of money. For a long-term goal, you can do this. It's more of like a fun goal. If you complete Hunter, which is killing Sturman 20 times, you get access to the MK18, which is a semi-automatic DMR that shoots 338 Lapua rounds. It is so much fun to use. If you find yourself really late in the game needing some goals, this can be a fun one to do while running some woods. But that covers all the quests I think you guys should target. They give you really nice unlocks. Hopefully you know exactly what quests to focus between me telling you which quests not to get hung up on and which ones are dead ends. The quest chart I provide you guys as well as which quests give you really nice rewards. If I missed anything or you think I fucked this video up in any way, let me know in the comments down below. I really wish I want to make better and better videos for you guys. And if you haven't seen the best settings to be running on Escape from Tarkov, as well as things that FPS professionals utilize to get a in-game advantage on you, then go ahead and check out my settings guide. It'll be on screen right now. I'll see you all in the live stream and in the Discord.